Okay, so Pete, uh, any any questions uh, from the chat room? Yep, we do. Uh, Frisbee asks, um, what did you, Craig, mm -hmm. um, use when you were um, conducting your interviews? What cameras and what kind of equipment? Um, almost all the film is shot on Super 16, um, Araflex. I did a deal with Araflex, and I shot everything on Super 16 millimeter film. Um, at that time, I was shooting almost everything on film. I did a lot of music videos and, and my other documentaries. This is in, began into the late 90s. There's a few bits and pieces. I had a DV camera, so in cars and in other situations, um, I would always have it there because you could just have a moment. The, the one interview that isn't is with Alan Parker because that was an off-the-cuff one where we met him. And it's always good to have the equipment, always have some good sound equipment with you. You know, you can keep it in a case just in case that moment happened. We had the film equipment near us. It was in Cannes, uh, Chris. Right. We're on a boat. There was Alan Parker. I asked him the interview, but basically we had 15 minutes to set. And the only other way to do that is to just go and pay a local news crew. That's a tip. See, if you're in a film festival like that and you don't have equipment with you, I've done this twice, just go on and cut a deal with a news crew, paid them, and got an interview, and one walked away. You don't actually have to carry that kit around all the time. Mm -hmm. But um, so it's Super 16 is the main format of the film to, ab to answer your audience guest out there in cyberspace. Okay. Any other questions, Pete? Yep. Uh, Jump off the screen asks, did you sign any exclusive agreement or royalties deal with Jack? Yep. I, uh, that's a very good question. I would uh, encourage people to um, think about what they're doing. I know a lot of filmmakers who've started documentaries and actually, you know, plan for success. And I, I spent a bit of money up front legally and the people who put money into it to protect what we were going to do just in case someone else came along. So Jack signed a contract with us so that he, so he wouldn't, let's say, uh, so, well actually what happened after I shot all the interviews and I was editing, he got the honorary Oscar and he did get offers but he was sticking with us at that point. So it's a very good thing to do, um, to, to, to do a contract with somebody and make sure it's drawn up properly. Right. You, you do have to spend a bit of money now and again um, on, in legal, and there's there's lots of lawyers out there and advice, or like your book, Grillas. You know, start start with some templates and then then fix it. But there is a dull side to it again. But if you don't do it, there will always be the back of your mind, and people fall out. I've known, I've met quite a few filmmakers recently have been shooting and fallen out, and then there's no clear cut ownership of of the footage. Unfortunately, that's the way it works. So you put all that time and effort into it. So it it also helps the trust factor. It's set there. You've got something. Right. Okay. Final question then, Pete. Um, final question from Nick. What changes were made from pilot to final doc? Well, the pilot to Nick out there um, was very simple. It was just Jack. So I, went, I just shot Jack over a couple of days at his house, his paintings, his portraits. And um, back then, actually, I was mainly editing off of VHS clips, whereas I needed to raise the money to shoot everybody else. Um, most of the British people were shot at Pinewood, a couple of people in location. But now I wanted to, wanted to do that. Um, Jack actually shot a film here at Ealing, um, a Scott of the Antarctic, so it's quite nice being here. Maybe the ghosts of Jack and John Mills are with <laughs> us right now. Um, but, you know, it's expensive going out to the States and filming people. Um, so the pilot was to give everybody an idea. I'm, I'm a big fan of doing little pilots. And, and there's a lot of pitching things going on in the world, in documentary world, just so people know in Sheffield and in, in Toronto, and, and there's lots of things going on where, and they all say, get a little pilot. Even if you do a sound recording and, and do stills, I've seen really interesting things where someone's just gone in with a, uh, and done some sound and, and, and photographs. It gives people an idea of, of a per even the, the sound of their voice. But I, I tend to shoot, cut something about five to 10 minutes. And, I, and if you're, you're pitching, or if it's a biography, or if it's about a you know, any, any sports person or, or, or an institution or a building, just do a little pilot. It'll, it'll get you well down the road, especially if you don't have a track record. Right. <clears throat> okay, well, um, thanks, Pete. So, final question. I ask this everybody. What advice would you offer an emerging filmmaker? It can be anything you want. The catering one. <laughs> <laughs> the lower the budget, the better the catering. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, honestly. Um, and anything else? A uh, Wide references. Go, go to a lot of stuff. I always say... Uh, somebody came to me recently, and she she'd finished a media course, and was applying to BBC Manchester. And I gave her a Super 8 camera and one roll of film. And I said, think of an idea and shoot it in camera. Do that. And she, she said, oh, I've never used the camera. I said, it's very simple. You know, don't, don't, don't fear it. And she did that and she got the job at BBC Manchester. Right. So it's, it just, there's lots of ways. There's lots of ways to crack that nut. You know, so if everybody, if, if, if 20 people around you are on HD, it's not that you should go and be different 
to stand out. But you're fighting. You're fighting for people's time. You're fighting for people's attention. And there's lots of ways you can add on top of your core story or your core idea. Just like Sam earlier, you need you need something above and beyond the sea of other people yeah. out well, there. Well, see what registers with you. I, I think you wander around. You know what I do? I, I walk into um, news agents and look at all the magazines, and then I go, which one catches my eye? And I go like that, and I buy it. And I go, why did that work? It's so easy. Because mainly it's people's faces. It's 100 people's faces. Model it, and you just go, open your eyes. You go, all right, two things caught my eye. Just start like that. Mm. I do that. I actually still do that. Mm. Fantastic. All right, Craig. Well, the movies, uh, it's still playing around playing the country. Playing around the country. If you go to www.jack, as in Jack of all trades, Cardiff, as in the city in Wales, jackcardiff.com, there's a little ticket symbol. Um, we're keeping it updated. It's just been sold to the United States, so it'll be rolling out there. It's the first festival after Cannes is going to be in Kolovivari in the Czech Republic. Because Hang on, dude, we, I've completely yeah. forgot about the whole Cannes experience. Because oh, yeah. we, we hooked up in Cannes, <laughs> yeah. and you said it's playing in the festival, yeah. and you had the whole red carpet yeah, thing. Yeah, and yeah. Just tell us about that briefly. Yeah, I, uh, it, it was released. There was a Jack Carter season at the BFI in London, and um, the film was running there. And we have heard... Um, that it got into the Cannes Film Festival, which it was amazing, Chris. I mean, so it was in the, the festival, it was in Cannes Classics, which had about four documentaries this year, which are about artists or filmmakers, and it was shown in the Palais in red carpet, and it kind of got moved from further down the week to the opening weekend, and so I, I couldn't in any way have um, asked for a better right. launching pad for the world. I mean, Cannes was fantastic. You got a standing ovation, and yeah. so... Yeah, I, I've got no complaints there. And, and, you know, just casting your mind back to when you began 13 years earlier, would you have ever imagined that that would be, the, you know, the, the first launching pad, as you would put it? No, I don't think you ever said anything in your mind. And so you, you maybe have the odd daydream. Everybody does, you know. But um, when I actually heard it, I actually didn't believe it. I, they said it'll be on the website. I said, you know what? Until I see it written or black and white, I don't believe things. Mm. So I waited about from the actual phone call. I had these kind of weird days where I threw it out of my head and waited. And then when I saw it, I believed it because they couldn't go back. Mm. It, it was, it's fantastic. So, yeah, always aim. You never know where you're going to end up, Chris. Mm -hmm. you, know? you know, we started in Bournemouth, you know, yeah, running yeah. around in the middle of the night, bad catering. <laughs> and, you, you know, here we are chatting. So, you know, and, and never, there are really low points. I've burned a lot of weekends sitting alone doing stuff. It's not a heart throb, it's not a sob story. You've got to put a lot of time in there. Mm. It does, I don't think anything comes easily you've got to work hard in this business mm -hmm. but there's there's good rewards and it was a great reward to be standing at Cannes and seeing it screened there mm. so again it's it's out in theaters it's in out the in theaters right now around the country um cardiff next week a it's it's going to sheffield it's going to dundee it's, it's you know it's actually all over the country mm. um if you go to www.jackcardiff.com it's there and it keeps getting updated it's coming right. back to london so it's it's out there for a couple more months um, in the um, cinema when's it going to be out on dvd and blu-ray uh dvd's coming in pretty soon in the next eight weeks I believe. Um, Blu-ray, they're going to hold for a little while. It's, it's expensive. So, in fact, I just came from doing the DVD extras. Right. A lot of DVD extras, great stuff. If you want to hear much more of Martin Scorsese, Alan Parker, Jack, the relationship with the cinematographer, that, that's the nice thing about it, more actual stuff. So, in about eight weeks, the DVD will be out. And um, Blu-ray... Um, I'm going to have to n nudge them a bit. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> well, we, we'll do our bit, and we'll, we'll send some uh, emails, for, get everyone yeah. to send an keep, email keep saying... I'll come back while well, you're going out to L.A. Again. Yeah. I'll, I'll see you out in L.A. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs>